So Jordan, I want to know what's the what's the plan for Matilda in the spring? The plan for Matilda in the spring right now is uh she just got spayed, so she's been on the bench riding the pine. <clears throat> but once she can run, get her on some birds and then but what does that so what does on the on birds mean in the spring? I'll just take her to run on wild birds until they start to pair up and nest and stuff. Gotcha. Um, and then probably work on steadying her up um, with a flank collar. And a that's like a, a collar on their belly. Oh, so you gotcha. get them conditioned to stop on it. Take. I mean, it'll probably take a while because you have to get them to where they know that stimulus means stop. So I've done um, like woe post stuff with her in that, but it still doesn't, um, from what I understand, it's not just like a direct, you can't just jump from that to the, to the flank collar on birds. It's not necessarily going to make sense to them. Um, so steady her up a little bit. Um and uh, have some frozen wings and stuff and work on some retrieving things. And that's pretty much it. And then just keep her in shape. Runner. I, uh, run, run. I was curious because I was at, uh, I was at Barnes and Noble yesterday and I was just, I always go peruse through the magazines. Cause like I usually buy a, when the new Gray's hunting journal comes out, I get that. And I look at gun dog and all this kind of stuff. And so I picked up the uh, the newest edition of Gun Dog, and there's this cute little brown puppy on there. And I'm like, oh man, that puppy's adorable. And I I, mean, I turned it's a cocker, isn't it? It is, yeah, yes. <laughs> All I, signs point to cocker. I turned, I turned to those. I was like, oh, so let's, I because I mean, when they're that young, that like a boyke and a cocker, like they all kind of look the same, you know, and so. I opened it up and was like, I wonder what that is. And it said English cocker. I was like, son of a bitch. And you just slammed it shut and I threw it back threw at the rack. I, <laughs> I threw it at the barista in the ah, Starbucks. Get it away like, from me. Yeah. No, it was it was funny. But there was there they did like a, it was like a whole puppy edition, and there was all kinds of cool dogs in there. There's a really good looking Brittany. There was a, a lab and golden mix that was really cool. It just looked like a rusty, like a, a rusty yellow lab, but it was it was really cool. So I love looking at the dogs. I don't know what I want yet, man. You know what the universe wants you to have. <laughs> so the English. You can, you can you can fight that all you want. How small are they? Um, the English cock, like the English field cock. They're pretty small. I they're mean, like I don't smaller know what than... they weigh. Yeah, yeah, smaller. They're smaller than, than a Brittany or a Boykin, right? I haven't seen a Boykin in person, so I can't say. But my dog is a she's a kind of a runt Brittany, and um, cockers are significantly shorter than her. Yeah, see, I don't want like, a short dog. You should see those things run. I believe you. There's nothing about me that doesn't believe you. I'm just saying that I don't know if that's what I want, man. I love I love the look of your dog. I've been really thinking about I've been really thinking about Brittany's a lot. Yeah, I'm getting I'm probably getting another one in May. That's what I heard when you were talking about Nick with Nick on his podcast. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know that was the plan. Well, it's kind of like it's, it's an interesting thing. Um a lot of dogs that I don't even know how to explain it. It's not, there's a lot of dogs that are bred and stuff that aren't like, you can't just go and get on a puppy list and get one. Right. There's some like old school guys kicking around still that they want to like talk to you first. There's no puppy list. It's all like uh word of mouth. They have to like you. I think that's how Brett got his boykins. They're yeah. not like looking to make m money or anything really. They're usually like breeding for a purpose and they want those dogs to live kind of the they they kind of want if they're interested in making like really high power dogs, they want dogs to go to the right places and they need to be able to see what those dogs are gonna do. Um so I'm like tended like tentatively 
maybe gonna get one of these dogs in may the guy actually sent me a message yesterday so it's i think it looks good he he was like a friend my friend told me about him and he like talked with me and then he talked to my friends like oh i had a good conversation with your friend blah 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 it's just like it's like being interviewed almost you know i think that's cool though man no i I, love it i I think that's cool because it's you know if you really care about the dogs and you put that much time into them, you don't want them to go somewhere where like, yeah, you don't want to just sell them to anybody. Yeah. I get that. I get that a lot. So the weird, the weird stuff though is, is the ones where you get them from a certain breeder and, and I guess it's just when you register them, you don't have to necessarily call them, but like you have to include their name in their, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the kennels name and stuff. Yeah. That's odd to me, but I guess it's just because I'm not part of that world really all that much yet but you know yeah some of those people are a part of it is that the the people are really into pedigrees yeah um and so that the part of that with registering them is they want to know that dog's like lineage so when they pull up a pedigree or whatever they can look at um and a pedigree doesn't tell you everything but they still they still want to know and to like field trial a dog or anything you have to they have to be registered so I get that. And that all makes sense. I just, I don't know. I guess I'm just still on the outside looking in yet. So I don't really. It's a weird, it's a weird world. There's parts of it I like, and there's parts of it. There's plenty of it that I don't. Yeah. Cause that's the thing too. Cause I'm like, I don't know, like I might, there might be a part of me that like wants to test the dog and do some stuff just to, to work on just, just to do it and have the experience and maybe know that I have to dedicate that much work to get it done. But it's like, I just, I just kind of want my dog and I want to hunt and I want to be left alone. You know, like that's all that I want. So, yeah, you know? uh, I'm in the same boat, but at the same time, I understand why field trials exist because the, it's kind of the benchmark for um, breeding. Well, yeah, just for performance. So, and there's even different field trials for different breeds of dogs. Um, so it's, it's a, uh, it gives you just kind of a benchmark to see because otherwise people can just breed dogs and say they're a thing and never kind of have actualized versus when certain dogs have been field trial and they, they win all sorts of stuff. Um, it just means something a little different. I get it. I get it. It's and just... so this next pup is, if I get it, is out of like some, cranking 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 field trial dogs very pedigreed like um kind of it's it's a. Uh, I mean the pet the guy like knows all sorts of stuff about every like I, he, I, he i showed him my dog's pedigree and he was like there's like a who's who's list of and i didn't know he's like a field trial dogs and your dog's pedigree i'm like oh yeah cool like she's in matilda's cool yeah no oh, cool which my friend that told me to get her like he knows all that stuff and so he was like oh get this guy's dogs are good um but uh this this other dog like they are from a they're kind of from a the land before time they go back a little further with when britney's were really 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 high power um so they're like they're they feel trial pretty much all their stuff and those dogs run like you know thousand twelve hundred yards which is kind of mostly unheard of for Britney's. you can hear about that with some short hairs and you hear about that a fair bit with pointers and setters that's kind of the two dogs main. With a, a lot longer legs pretty much yeah and like that were originally meant to do it like yeah. you know that because that's pointers are kind of the they were it and so a lot of people say like well why bother getting one of these other dogs when it took a pointer to make these other dogs you mm. know so and i understand that argument fair enough i just don't really want a pointer i don't know why i mean if somebody gave me one a puppy a really good i would take it all right you like what you like man you know i don't know it's just that's what i tell my daughter all the time you like what you like you like what you like nobody can tell you any different mm-hmm. so you did joel jameson's uh course the eight weeks mm. out course yeah i did a whatever uh seminar kind of thing last night talk to me about it what, what did you learn um 
I didn't really learn anything, I guess, because I've read like every single thing I possibly can get my hands on from him already and or listen to it. Um, but I always think it's good to go back to those things to be like reminded or sometimes when you have a different understanding, the information's a little different. Um, I did like how he talked about depending on somebody's fitness level, kind of waving their model of intensity throughout the week a little differently if they're like well-trained. Um, you know, what did he say? Um, you know, his big thing obviously is like train, uh, recover, repeat. And so their intensity model for somebody that's well-trained, they kind of do it a little differently in that they'll have, um, their most intense day isn't like, um, the beginning of the week they'll have two essentially. So they have like, like moderate day, rebound day, intense day, um, and they'll, and they'll wave that, um, they have a, let me see, I have the, but yeah, moderate day, intense day, rebound day. And then they, they wave that through the week. Um, if it's six, you know, if it's six sessions, um, what's which the is justification a little... for not leading off with the intense day? Uh, well, with the, in this model, if somebody's like well-trained and they can actually recover from two intense days, um, uh, having those two days um, separated by enough low intensity days, but then also following the kind of HRV patterns that they've seen with people over time, oh, the way okay. they respond. So rather than, because if you basically you can have like a stimulus day kind of, that's not super hard. So you're like aerobic power zone, maybe, um, nothing crazy and then you'll see hrv usually bump up that day and then they hit it hard with the like really intense day and then you're you know you're kind of like going to be relatively taxed so they hit it with like a lower day rebound kind of day and then hrv bumps back up and then they hit the stim like stimulus day and hrv bumps up higher so and then they hit the yeah so they kind of ride that wave with uh the more well-trained people the average people um I shouldn't say average, but people that can't recover. And that was a good reminder too. Not just necessarily somebody's fitness, but their their recovery, like how many people can outkick their coverage. You could have somebody that's well trained, like in really good shape, but if the rest of their life sucks, you can still only train them up to their recovery. It doesn't matter. I mean, and the caveat being if they're really young, because their recovery will be like <laughs> like great no matter what like oh, eight, sure like no sleep french fries soda whatever and your recovery is still better than mine at 35 mm -hmm. um so but it's just real it was a nice thing to highlight because it showed a bunch of hrv trends and other things and his big thing is to just slowly increase that over time um and slowly just, increase what uh the goal of like slowly increasing somebody's cardiovascular HRV fitness oh, which is reflected in hrv over time like very slowly um you're like you know he was showing things over like eight months over a year and just this little gradual trend up um and talking about how to not you just can't infinitely scale up um and, and volume and intensity you mean yeah. Yeah. yeah and and how which everybody knows because you can't just do more or go harder all the time but that's the thing is like everybody doesn't know that though uh, i well i should say if you've trained people in any regard or you've just objectively looked at your own stuff or you've taken any metrics you know that you can't do it but people want to do that well, th that's the expectation and that's why i gotta go harder you yeah. gotta keep doing more well that's what... get better it was so cool. I forget how long ago it was just maybe last month or the month before when we did one of the check-ins and Dustin um, said in during the check-in on one of the Friday check-ins that we do, but how he's seen like his output go up and his heart rate go down in high intensity continuous training, like over the years that he's trained with us and the volume isn't significantly different. The intensity isn't different all that different but it's like because the stimulus changes throughout the year you come back and you get more out of that adaptation because you're still working on all these aspects of fitness and like you're still improving your cardio respiratory fitness you're improving your or maintaining your strength and all these other outputs but it's like 
it's not because we just dumped more gas on the fire. It's because we changed the stimulus enough and had our volume and intensity in the right places that he could recover and then actually continue to layer on top of that with the same amount, relatively the same amount of volume and intensity. Yeah. And, and this thing really made a lot of sense in terms of um, with what you're saying with periodized, things that are done correctly you have the kind of like initiation you ramp up volume intensity and it stabilizes and then you have weeks of kind of um lower volume intensity but the way that you have all the programming done is like you go into the next block and that allows you to adapt and recover from whatever other stimuluses that we were using um while still continuing to train forward so um there's a lot to that and you have to look at a program on a very long-term basis to apply that model and you looking at methods and long-term basis not just like i'm gonna write a month of programming no it's never never works doesn't work yeah yeah i think one of the i'm sorry go ahead buddy no i just i i hope people understand how much goes into that um because it's not an accident no and you've you've laid out a really good <laughs> i so for instance i i had to assign somebody an everfit and we're on a programming block right now and the that's all the same it's it's part of the same progression right and i had to reassign him and he's I had to get him on day 58 was the day I assigned him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So somebody's looking at, Oh, how many, how many, whatever, you know, I'm going to buy this four weeks of workout or whatever. Like there's still, you know, whatever, five weeks in this block and where he's at was like where everybody's at right now is day 58 of the block. Yeah, dude. It's not like, Oh yeah, let's get you in two weeks of this kind of conditioning or something. No, no, he's like in this big progression and that's, that's where everybody's at, which is it, awesome. It is. And it's, I mean, and I think that, well, there's two things I'm going to list them now so we can make sure that we talk about it. The first thing I want to talk about is um, you, you said about the, you can't train somebody beyond their recovery. And then the second thing was um, talking about the stimulus change. But I, I I think that that's so right now one of we you know we use Morpheus at our gym at, at uh, Beyond mm-hmm. Strength, and so we have a lot of adopters and we have some people that haven't adopted yet and we're like working we're just like playing the long game of of working people into it, and I think one of the most like I love the recovery tests for Morpheus I love how it zones you and all of that kind of stuff but I think one of the most important things is it, it shows you it's, it's, I was trying to think of it. It's almost like it gives you like, you know, when you're bowling and you're a little kid and they put the the rails, the bumper rails down bumpers. I'm very familiar. I have a (laughs) five-year-old. Well, the bumper, it's like bumper. It like gives you, it tells you what different stimuluses do to you and, and what you're recovering from you, what you're recovering from and what you're not, and then how to manage yourself based on that. So it's like, if you're somebody that has a bunch of bad habits, it's and reflected. It's re- you'd learn. And it's mm-hmm. like, I, I need to change this. And it gives that's you why I data. think people don't want it. I, th- I mean, fair enough. It's you have to stare at it in it's, the face and do something. Yeah. It's it. like if if you want to lose weight, you have to step on the scale. Right. Right. Um, and the Morpheus, I was, you know, I I've, I've had a lot of people be like, oh, that's silly or that's whatever. And and I'm and I always say like, well, do you know what you're like, do you measure HRV with any device? And they're like, no. And they're asking questions about things. And I'm like, I can't really guide you because I have no idea where you're at yeah. with anything. I don't know if your recovery sucks. I don't know how good your cardiovascular fitness is on a long-term basis. So getting people to adopt that is. But that's also, that's you know. The, uh, the people that want to dump more gas in the fire, they think that they need mm-hmm. more. And a lot of times it's because they go and they do workouts and they feel like they're not getting better. And so they're like, well, I must have to dump more gas in the fire. But if you have yeah. the objective information that said like, 
no man your sleep sucks don't do that yeah <laughs> drinking enough water like your your yeah. hrv score is like really low so if you do this you're just going to continue to put yourself further into a hole so i think it's if you pay attention to it and you use it the way that you're supposed to it's a really good behavior modification tool because absolutely you, you start to learn about how different things affect you and if you really want to do something about it you just you just listen you know you just listen to it and you do it but it's the objective data of is important you know it's because even for me right now man like i'm still my my hrv scores on morpheus are typically in the mid 80s mid to upper 80s and from having the flu and everything i'm just now getting back into the 70s dude uh after i had covid mine were shit for so long yeah it just and it's just like you know you, we i have this wild hair up my ass it just like what's your say 90 look at you you bragging son of a bitch uh i have this wild hair up my ass to just crush myself because that's mm -hmm. my that's my nature but i think a lot of people that's our nature though too like oh for I, sure i think people should understand that it doesn't mean you're stupid or something we just need to know why we need to put the brakes on yeah and and have the information to do it but that's like yeah yesterday um carly and carly and i were at my gym training and i i did our first eustress training workout from from this new training block and you know it calls for 20 minutes of the eustress superset and I got to like 10 minutes and I was like, I'm only going to do, Done. I'm going to yeah. do 15 because if I go the whole way to 20, this is going to be a really big problem for me for the rest of the week. And it's because, you know, learning from how you subjectively yeah. feel, but also like looking at this data and saying, I know that if I do this, I'm going to have a bad week. I should, I need to take yeah. it, you know, but that you have all that experience and everything to know that versus like not monitoring anything this workout says to do this you know and and like i said auto regulation or whatever you want to call it but knowing like well you know i'm gonna do this and sometimes 15 minutes is better than 20 so oh, without or a 18 doubt. or without whatever like sometimes Absolutely. it's actually better well and and you the thing is is Just one of the problems well yeah but i think the problem is is that people don't they don't want to trust it mostly like on emotion because they feel as though they're going to lose something or whatever it might be. But I think if people could just, you know, people trust all kinds of silly bullshit. You know what I mean? There's Absolutely. so many things that people give their trust to, but yeah. if you could just give your trust to this process of, of learning via this, this uh, feedback that you get from, about how your body responds to things and how it recovers and just like trust that this is the amount of training that you need today you need to listen to this and 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 pay attention and then seeing like you said over the long term like we're yesterday was day 58 of our training program and like follow this process and do it over the long term and see what happens and then you realize that you go to a whole different better place and all of this time is going to pass anyway. And all of this training is going to happen anyway. So it's like, it's it, why not? Well, yeah. But I mean, I think too, is, is people think that if they crush themselves or they do this thing at this intensity, they're going to get somewhere faster. Mm -hmm. And like, you don't, you go backwards faster, dude, and, you know, absolutely. And, I, and people trying to lose weight parallels the same thing. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that because it's too slow. I'm like, so you're not going to try to lose weight at all. So you want to do it fast or not at all. Well, people don't want to prolong discomfort. I think that that is a big part of it, you know, but, but it's a, all a scale. And I guess that's, we're kind of speaking to the same thing is there's a continuum with both of these things. It's yeah. not on or off all or nothing. You have to learn that that's how things work. And whether you like it or not. Yeah. And I think I don't, I don't, it's interesting because, you know, people put blinders onto that, but I don't know, there has to be examples from other parts of people's lives or, or maybe they just don't get really good at things and they don't understand that it takes time, like with everything. And that's the process, you know? So dude, absolutely. I was going to say how many of these people have ever been like in fantastic shape oh, sure. to say, Hmm, you know, well, I did it this way before, like have, how 
where were you at? Give me some, you know, give me some numbers. What was your resting heart rate? What was your max effort X, Y, Z? And if you can't give me anything like really great all the way around, it's like, well, so why do you want to do that stuff? Yeah. If your, you know, resting heart rate is 60 or 65 and you can deadlift like 250 pounds, like if we want to be fair, like you could probably get better, probably have a lot of room to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, it's, it's tough for people to remove the emotion from things sometimes. And, you know, uh, most of the time. Most that, of that is one of the biggest things I've realized by doing this stuff with you. Yeah, it's tough. And and far, I mean, and we all have it in different aspects of our lives where it's tough for us to not divorce ourselves from the emotion. But absolutely. It's so there's there's no judgment in that. It's just like it's no. difficult for people to do. And that's everybody has I, a flavor of it. Exactly right. And that's why I think even the morpheus and and having the information or having an, i have an aura ring in morpheus and i use i toggle back and forth between the information and um having something to look at that isn't just what's living inside your head is is important i think that's a excellent point yeah um yeah so i i don't know i just um i i want i, I want people that are serious about because it's just like there's so many, you know, it actually it caught like it's it caught a heart problem for one of our clients at the gym too. Like her I believe it, man. Her her HRV scores were getting weird and her heart was doing erratic stuff at the gym. And it's like, so then she went to her cardiologist and and got shit straightened out. And, you know, had she not had this tool, like who knows what could have happened to her. But it, and so if you look at longevity and like one of the things about long-term health is like having a high hrv score so if you have a way to measure it objectively improve it and then continually check in on it man like you're doing so much for yourself over the long term and especially you know with what we do like our 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 credo is train smarter hunt longer and you could apply that hunt to whatever other aspect of your life you want to apply it to but i mean i just i don't know it's like it's just, it's like uh, living like we live now and then that, like choosing to ride a horse everywhere instead of driving a car, you know? It just, we have the technology to do this in a better way. Yeah, and we're all we're all on that ride, whether we like it or not. Like you're saying, overall health, longevity, um, and there are certain things we know are good over time in terms of general wellness and health. And if everything we're saying, these things take time to build. So it's good to know where you're at now, regardless of if it's good, bad, ugly, indifferent, know where you're at to set that kind of upward trajectory and build that for a long time. Because if, yeah, if you want it right now, that sucks. But if you're like, well, I have 10 years to do this, like no pressure. Well, yeah, (laughs) but it's also think i mean and and it's tough to do it's tough for people to do and it's definitely a skill to to um to learn and develop but being able to think that far into the future is huge because you make decisions in a different way like i'm not saying don't have fun and don't live your life right now but like I just always think it's so silly when people behave like they're not going to be 80 years old because nine chances out of 10, you're going to be 80, you know, and how do you want it to be when you're 80? And, you know, like my, uh, my, um, my girlfriend's a a nurse and she tells me all these, (laughs) that's such such a dumb career. I was asking, what was the last thing that you did bedside when you were doing, was it ER work? Yeah. It was ER work. That's what I thought it was. Um, and she tells me all these stories of these, you know, of course she does because she works in a hospital, but all of these people that are horribly sick in their old mm-hmm. age, you know, it's like, man, or, or not that old, like 60s, not that old. And maybe, and maybe there's no way to avoid some of that, but it's like, man, if, if even just doing little things now could, could make my experience better then. Oh, do you know how many, how many people I've heard say, well, I didn't plan on being alive this long. I've heard so many people say really? that they're like seven, early seventies. Yeah. They're like, well, I didn't plan on being alive this long. So 
and their life's just in shambles, like health, finances, everything, family. And they were just like, didn't have a plan. Didn't plan to be here. Don't know what I'm going to do now. And I'm, it doesn't take seeing people that many times in that situation. Be like, I don't want that to be me. Yeah. No shit. Right. Mm-hmm. God. And there's like one, like there's, so there's a couple things. Like it's, it's, it's the, the recipe's pretty simple. As if like, of course, there's other things like love you and belonging control, and but... having your community and things like that. But if you look at it, like can control your calorie intake, mm-hmm. make sure your cardiovascular and aerobic fitness is good. Stay strong, stay powerful. Yeah. Do shit you enjoy. Mm-hmm. That's it. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. And it, it's, I don't know. That's what's like, I just want people to do stuff like just and it's like so one little thing just like have something in your life that you enjoy and and don't eat so much <laughs> it's like yeah did i tell you i started uh i started doing using the carbon app no you didn't tell me yeah i did i, started I mean it's it. nothing earth shattering but it's the same like thing your t- modification right i did a it's, check-in this morning and well and that's it yeah. simple interface and then it has that accountability piece well so see i think here's the issue is i weighed myself on the scale at the gym and then this time well yeah so and then this time i weighed myself i just bought another scale and weighed myself here this morning and i don't know if one of them's light or one of them's heavy because i've been following the calories and i'm i'm up two pounds so then so the car they just cut my calories by they start yeah, they start on the grandiose end. The same yeah. thing happened with me. They told me the calories, and based on what I've done previously, I was like, "That's like probably 300 calories too high." I think. Yeah. Um, and that was about they cut my calories down, uh, you know, whatever 300, 400 calories on the first check-in thing because it was the same thing. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, you'll also figure out obviously how much you're everything fluctuates with hydro um carbohydrates and everything oh, like sure. as those change i mean your your float will change a fair bit and then it kind of gets settled in and now you know and you're just cruising like you know 0.2 pounds or whatever um 0.5 pounds at a time they have me down they, to to 2237 calories per day i'm at 21 something yeah honestly though there's a lot of times where I actually come in a bit under that. Like I'll hit my protein goal, but I come in a little under that. Um, See, that's from not by much. My understanding of doing all of this stuff for such a long time, like I don't, I worry about total calorie intake and making sure that I have enough protein and I just kind of let everything else kind of fall where it is because that yeah. seems to be the most important two variables. Did you get your protein in and did you, did you hit around the, the right amount of calories? I, I agree. The only thing for me is if I don't have enough carbs, um, my just overall hydration will suffer a bit. I've yeah, noticed. Um, you just made me want to take a drink of water. So I've kind of um, made a little bit of a point to to kind of pay more attention to that. So I'll, I'll hedge more towards carbs than fat, obviously, for that reason. Interesting. Um, I, w- I would love to do when my buddy Josh played in the NFL – they did like a, and I don't, they did it. He did it. We actually have, I have the capability to do this. We have the technology at my gym. We just need to get a new thing. Uh, what metabolically, what you, where you're biased towards for, for oh, source. that's yeah. rad. We have a, we have a unit um, where we, for VO2 max, we do a resting metabolic rate. We have uh, a fuel source um, test and we just, I just haven't done it yet. I need to go do that. You should. That's very cool. Yeah. Metabolic flexibility is the, is the goal. And that's, that's kind of like when, you know, as we get into the summer, we do more fasted training. And I think when people hear me say that and like people that are into training and stuff, they're like, well, it doesn't increase your rate of fat loss. That's not how it works. Like, well, it's not why we're doing it. You know, it's just, so first of all, you get used to doing shit when you're hungry. And second of all, um, it, it trains you to um, bias towards fat for at least some yeah. of the time when you're when you're uh, 
having yeah. to do low, slow things for long duration and you're underfed, you know? So. Depend, yeah, depending on like your carbohydrate carbohydrate intake the night before because right. arguably your glycogen and everything could be like as topped off as it's going to get even if you haven't eaten that morning sure and everybody's oh, everybody's also different you know when people say like oh that doesn't bias you towards fat loss it's like do you think that we actually know everything there is to know about the human body no. hell no. to the no no you know what i mean because there's other stuff too that'll point toward fasted training for overall metabolism and stuff is can be beneficial so you know but like you're saying metabolic flexibility yeah but there, and there's like, people that go like way into like like i know craig and john from building the elite like if you follow their stuff like you do you get your shit together and you're just able to do normal meals and then they have you do either the intermittent fasting style thing and then they yeah. have you do keto and then they have you go back to normal eating with the calories. Like, I don't know. I mean, they're training people for more extreme things, but I also don't yeah. know that it's necessary to do that to get the adaptations that you want. You know, I the, don't think it's necessary. I can't speak to their world because they clearly know what the fuck they're doing. And I think that everything that they're doing has a purpose, but for the average person, I haven't seen anything very convincing regarding getting rid of carbohydrates. I also don't know. I don't think I people just, realize how hard it is to actually be ketogenic. Like it's difficult and it takes, it takes time. It's an, ex, it takes time for you to actually, to get into ketosis. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. No. And like I said there for the average person and depending on what you want to do, like most people, I mean, a lot of people, if you're like, what do you want out of the gym? They're like, well, I want to get in better shape, look a little better, I want to build some muscle. And it's like, well, those people to like for feeling good, building muscle, that kind of thing, like carbohydrates are your friend. Yeah. Well, and also, <laughs> especially for hydration, like you're talking That's, about, like, yeah, you know, dehydrate the shit out of yourself. Like build, you building, building muscle and, and, uh, and yeah, just cellular hydration, all that stuff is like, they're not bad. Well, it's also, you know, when you look at a lot of these different nutrition or diet protocols, whatever you want to call them, like whether it's ketogenic diets or intermittent fasting or any of these things and like, and whether you talk about the health benefits or whatever it might be, it all points to a reduced number of calories that you're taking in. Like that is, yeah. that's it. That's where you're getting the benefit from. You're eating less. Well, that's like Lane Norton. I like what he says. You know, he's just like, you got to restrict something. Yeah. It's just, you just have, it's got to be something. Time, calories, but the overall goal is like something has to give. It's just, yeah. if you want to lose weight, it's just, that's the truth. And it's just, how do you want to approach it? Like far be it for me to tell you to not to do it. Like if you want to do intermittent fasting and that controls your calories, do it. So, you, hell yeah. If And if you're the kind of person that, likes to suffer do your ketogenic diet i don't care you know what i mean but i don't know it's easier for me to just look at it like count calories and and macros like it's far simpler for me to do that than because uh, but you also have there's a certain element of people that you know you got to build the skills first like understanding portion sizes and understanding stuff like that because like for example it's... you're not always going to be able to plug everything in so you got to oh. be able to pay attention to hunger cues portion sizes, all of these other kind of skills and, and really dial yourself in there. And then, you know, um, it helps because you're not always going to know everything that comes from, um, if you're at a restaurant, you know, you're not necessarily gonna be able to plug in the meal and, and get all the calories from it, you know? So no, but just also having the understanding of saying like, I don't even know what the hell this would be because I have no idea what they put in it. And just knowing that, like, hmm, well, I'm not going to go nuts on that because yeah. I just really don't know what what is all in there. Yeah. Um, But then the same thing, like you're saying, with portions and stuff, like, get a scale. You know, you do it enough times and you're like, I know what about this much of this looks like, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just, then, then you have that skill where you kind of, your estimation. I love estimation also. Yeah. Like a daily thing that I do. I try to estimate things all the time. 
It's like a game. Just for, just for fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, not I mean, just you are food. Odd. Like you're, you're I odd. am super odd. But I just estimating things. Like if you have no idea what time it is and you try to guess the time. That's fun. You know? And you're like, how close can I get? You know, I like doing that when I'm out hunting. And you're just like kind of. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. that I'm weird. So. I know that about myself. And it's everybody's okay. a little weird. Jordan, I've come to terms you. with it. I mean, yeah. you are weird, but not you know, everybody's yeah. a little weird. Um, oh, we should talk a little bit about something that's happening this week. The at the backcountry ready at home, backcountry ready at home stuff is launching this week. Um, and so that's our minimal equipment program. Uh, you don't need much to do it. You need kettlebell couple dumbbells um weight vest something like that maybe you can get a lot you can get along without even having a weight vest um you can do it right at home and we have three different options that are coming out with that so you can do completely individualized you'd be working one-on-one with uh the king of nevada jordan wilcher um <laughs> and he <laughs> he would completely individualize and customize your your walk through the training program and you'd be getting coaching from him, check-ins, all that kind of stuff. Second option is just like our backcountry ready program, but with, uh, the at home, the minimalist equipment. So, um, it's team coaching team. It's a team program. Um, we walk you through customizing the program. We check in with you. We coach you. You have a forum to make sure that you're getting all your questions answered. And we guide you through that. Um, and you get weekly coaching videos, walking you through everything, all of that. Um, and then the third option is just programming and you get the program, you get a weekly coaching video and we cut you loose to, to go on your own. And all of that is coming out this week. Um, the program will be updated monthly. Jordan's got the the first program done and uploaded in there. So we'll, we'll have it set for everybody to get started, um, next week. And so I'm excited about it because I know it's been something we've been getting, like over the past, I don't know, six, eight months, something yeah, like that. A bunch least. of messages on Instagram about, Hey, like I want to train with you guys, but I don't have a ton of equipment. Like, what do I need? And, you know, over the past couple of years of working with, you know, Robbie Kroger from blood origins and, um, Kalen from modern day sniper and, and those guys trained at home with minimal equipment and seeing how much progress they were able to make. It's like, okay, we do need to do something for people now. So we have it ready. It's going to be out this week. And um, the easiest way to make sure that you get in on it is to make sure that you get on our email list. And I have the the link in the, in the, the uh, show notes for our uh, home gym essentials guide. And it walks you through, you know, if you wanted to have a minimalist home gym, get this equipment and you'll be dialed in. So that's all happening this week. And I'm pumped for it. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to help a lot of people that don't want to go to a gym, don't have access to a gym. Maybe you live in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, and you're not driving somewhere, you know? So I'm pumped for it. Me too. I think it, I think it's good. I think it's like a very, um, I don't know, kind of grassroots, just kind of thing. Like we just want people to have good training, no matter what they have. Like, yeah for equipment for for whatever up different options for price what you can afford like the goal is really just to have like good training to anybody that wants it well you did a really good job taking the 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 backcountry ready program for people that have access to gyms and adapting that to a, a minimal equipment type format so thank you um, sir you did a great job i'm excited to get it out to people so if you haven't yet go get on the email list by clicking the link in the show notes, downloading the home gym essentials guide. That's hundred percent free. And, uh, the email is going out later this week. Right now it's Tuesday. What's today's date? March 7th, 7th. Yeah. It'll be out later this week and it'll lay out all the options for signing up and, and then we'll get started with everything next week. Heck yes, dude. Cool. That was cool. I like how you did that. That was very hip. Hip. <laughs> I'm hip. Yeah, you're super hip, man. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah. Oh, Jordan and I are gonna. Not. Jordan and I are gonna go kill turkeys at the end of the month. That's cool. I'm excited about that. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I got. I got my truck, so I, I can drive myself there. That'll be. Yeah. Daddy doesn't mm -hmm. have to take turkey hunting, so that'll be good. 
Yeah, no kidding. So my my I'm not being hazed by the five year old in my house anymore, who has been <laughs> apparently lamenting going to school by what I hear and probably everybody else in the background. So that's so funny. <sighs> I like that your your uh, your five year old roasts you. That's fantastic. She does. She roasts me. She's the five year olds are strange, man. They're like so capable in some ways and so incapable in others like she can make fun of me in a way that you're like you understand that adults are supposed to have certain things and i don't have one of those certain things right now and you understand you can make what a loser (laughs) but then other times you know like hey you need to get yourself from point a to point b and they're like i can't i'm five i'm breaking down five man that's all i got i give you're such a dichotomy of a human i'm at my capacity bro yeah, she's apparently there already at eight twenty six PST. So, <laughs> well, I uh, yeah, I'm pumped for you to see Leanne's ranch, man, and meet meet. Me, the, I'm I'm excited. Meet the Hatlers. It's a beautiful place. It's one of my favorite it places looks, on the on like the it. earth. So, and the turkeys gobble all day, and we're the only ones that are allowed to be there. So I was gonna say, very nice that they would even let me show up there. Oh, dude, they're push- Leanne's pumped to have you. She's excited, That's man. Very very nice of them. Yeah. We got we got seven hundred acres all to ourselves. So <laughs> shoot, yeah. it's not yeah. very much room. Yes, and if we want to, just for funsies, we there's some there's some BLM land that's close by that we can go walk around on. So awesome! I can't cool. wait. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. But well, I'll leave you to your day. I know you got to get your kid to school. Um, for those of you that are listening, go download the Home Gym Essentials Guide and get ready for the release of Backcountry at Home this week. All right. Yes. All right. Peace and chicken grease.